Morning guys, second upper body session of the week. I'm just about to run through what you need to do. So A1 and A2 were, well A1 was a pull up sequence which involves, I did it on my rings, so I have rings and a bar set up at home now. As I mentioned right at the start of this, you're gonna struggle with pulling movements at home unless you have a pull up bar, maybe some rings or a TRX or a sufficient load to row. Um, this is going to last longer than what we thought, or may, perhaps more than some people thought. So it might be worth investing in a bar to go in a doorway. Uh, you can get the ones that hook over the door frame, whatever works best for your home. You're going to pick one of them up for around 10, 15, 20 quid. You will definitely get your money's worth from it over the next couple of weeks, months. So if you can't do the pull-up as pictured in the um, demo, you're gonna maybe have to resort to the, the towel over the door again and, and perform in that fashion. But let's imagine that you do have sufficient equipment to be able to do some type of pull-up movement. You'll see that my feet are up on a chair. That's to make the movement easier than full pull-ups. Still difficult. The height to which you elevate your feet increases the difficulty. So if your feet are only on, say, a, a one foot um, table or box or something, that is going to be easier than if your feet are elevated up to say four foot higher than your hips because you're going to be pulling more of your weight up and you can rely less on your feet to help you pull up. So the way we performed that set was we set up, we performed to failure. Now you want that failure to happen in, in definitely less than 20 reps, probably less than 10 reps. So set the difficulty so that you will not get past definitely 20 but I would say try and aim for, for no more than 10 on the first part of the set. You then rest 10 seconds, try and perform another three reps, rest 10 seconds, try and perform another three reps, and you continue in that fashion until you can no longer perform the mini set of three, or you hit five sets of the threes. So that would be your first initial set where you fail, and then there's five more sets of three. That, that concludes that set. You then move on to your dips. You'll see them. You see me perform them on um, a countertop in the kitchen. I've got a, a right angle countertop, so there's a corner in my kitchen that I can use. Um, you could use the backs of two sturdy chairs. You could use, um, it's, it's hard to say what you have access to. You might have maybe a banister and a chair that you could use at home. Um, just be sensible with what you're using that it's not gonna result in fit, um, injury or damage to your, to your property. But it works really well in that corner of the kitchen because um, you can adjust where your hand position needs to be um, for the individual. I've also included a clip where Simone demonstrates the same movement um, and I'm assisting her with my hands to take some of the weight out of the, the movement for her so she can perform the 10 reps. You could do that with obviously whatever you decided to do your dips on and then also maybe put a chair under your feet. But you still want to keep that upright body posture as much as you can. So you'll bend at the knees and have the tops of your feet resting on the chair and try and put as little weight back into your feet as you can so that the majority of the, the, um, the movements being performed by the upper body. So that's the dips. Uh, we're going to perform four sets of that. So as I've just explained, times four sets. We then moved on to uh, single arm row. So the single arm row, uh, you see me perform with a, an additional band because I've only brought um, 10, k, 10 kg dumbbells home from the gym. Um, and I've bought a selection of bands because I know that I'll be able to add uh, external resistance to the kit that I've brought home. So if you don't have the sufficient weight to row, but you do have bands, then you might want to look at incorporating the band into the movement to, to provide more resistance for that rowing action. Uh, that was four sets. First set, we're doing 15 on each side. Second set, the same. Third set, 12 each side. Fourth set, 12 each side. And that's back to back with a press-up sequence. So the press-up sequence, uh, you need to pick a tempo on the negative part, so the down part of the movement. I did 10 seconds. I wouldn't go any higher than 10 seconds, but you can definitely go less than 10 seconds on the negative. You want to be fail failing in less, uh, in 10 reps or less. So I think, I'm not sure, on the first set, maybe I get six, four, I'm not too sure. You're then going to perform that same tempo to two other different difficulty positions for the press-up. So for me, <coughs> I did full range press-ups on the floor, 10 second negative, and I go in that fashion till I fail. 
after that, I move my hands up onto an elevated surface, so an easier position. I carry on with the 10 second negative. I think I only maybe got one or two out on that. Then I move to a third position, an easier position. So I went back down to the floor and moved to my knees. 10 seconds down, I performed a few reps there. So it's three movement, three parts to that one set where you're going to failure on the tempo version of a press up that you decide. And then we're doing four sets of that. So the four sets of the row, back to back with the press ups. Uh, then moving on to C, we had banded curls. So if you don't have bands, you maybe have to going to have to use a towel um, around a door frame or a door handle and row your body weight. Uh, you could use TRX or you could use um, Olympic rings if you have them. Um, if you have bands, you could fix them and maybe just row the band. Um, yeah, it depends what you've got, guys. So uh, we're going to go 25 reps. So it needs to be, you know, not an absolutely really ridiculously difficult position for you to perform the, the curling in because you're going to go for 25 reps. Uh, then we moved on to the tricep press ups. So these tricep press ups, you'll see from the video, my hands are, are like this on the floor. So my elbows are flared out, my hands are facing inwards i then press the floor away like this and then let my arms move out to the side press do half the reps in that in whatever whichever way around you set up initially and then change the hands around and perform the remainder of the reps with the hands the alternate way around uh, we're going 10 reps on that and then we're going to rear fly movement so you'll see from the video i set up with my head on the um, the couch just so that i know i'm not uh, cheating the movement. I use the band. Uh, you'll see how I set it up later in the video. If you don't have bands, you could use dumbbells. Uh, you could use um, you could use a towel where you would be pulling the towel across. So the towel would be here, and I'm pulling it across my body. And you'll just I would just work on the holds at the top. So the tempo for the banded version was I'm pulling fast. I'm holding in that that out position for five seconds and then I'm releasing the tension for five seconds five four three two one pull hold for five five four three two one pull obviously if it's a towel you're only going to be getting the resistance when it's taut across your body and you're pulling on that top part so maybe um, I would do a longer hold in that position and then rest for five and then a longer hold rest for five longer hold rest for five and do it that way because you're not going to be getting anything once you start to take the tension out of the towel um, and that was for six reps so that was done in a little sequence the biceps the triceps and then the rear fly all in a three-way circuit and uh, we did that for four sets also um, getting quite com complicated now with some of the instructions just to keep the variety there and also it, it, this is some of the more effective ways of training by using tempo by using you know changing the lead position um lever lengths and positions of hands on on furniture and things like that they're just enabling movements common movements to be um, changed so that we can uh, adjust the difficulty for our own ability but also within a session where we don't just want to do a hundred of the same thing because either we can't do that and once we get to maybe five reps we're, we're stuck and we can't do any more so we need to look at in a gym we can obviously change the pin on the machine or we can change the dumbbells on the rack to make movements easier when we're stuck with our own body we have to look at different ways of adjusting the load going through the movement and that's normally done via lever length so i.e press ups from our feet or press ups from our knees we're changing the lever length or the angle of execution so uh, press ups on the floor is that's also sort of um to do with the lever length as well but then bringing my hands up onto a surface it's changing the the angle i'm pressing at but it's also changing the lever length things like putting my feet up on the chair when i'm doing the pull-ups it's changing the overall weight of my body being applied to that movement because the chair is taking some of my lower body weight so yeah we just it, you don't really need to know that but that's why some of the movements are becoming a little bit more complicated to explain because we're looking at this variety um, we don't just want to keep performing the same movements day in, day out, because that, A, that gets boring, and B, you're probably going to pick up a few little injuries maybe just by performing higher reps because it's body weight over prolonged periods of time of the same movement. You're probably going to pick up niggles. Um, so, yeah, on to the demos.